Hello and good morning and welcome to our Energy Spectrum Roundup webinar on a sunny 17th of May here in Suffolk where I'm hailing from today. I've got two speakers with me this morning, Robert Buckley, who's going to chat through his energy perspective. And I've also got Alex Jepson, who is going to join me to talk through article that she wrote in Energy Spectrum for us yesterday. Robert, if you'd like to introduce yourself to everyone. Good morning, Ronnie. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me on. Yeah, I'm Robert. My title is Head of Relationship Development at Cornwall Insight. I look after the relationships we've had with our customers. And I'm here to chat about the energy security bill that was outlined in the Queen's speech last week. Brilliant. Thank you, Robert. And welcome. And um, Alex, this is your first time, I think, on our Energy Spectrum Roundup webinar. If you'd just like to sort of um, introduce yourself to everyone, that would be fabulous. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm one of the year in industry students here looking at domestic supply and nearly at the end now, but it's been a great year. Really interesting. I'll just say Alex has done a cracking job and I know she's very well thought of in the, in the team and in the company wider. Yes, indeed. Echo those thoughts. Yeah. Lovely to have had you for our year. We've got you for a couple more months before, we, uh, before you have to go back for your third and final year. So thank you so much for joining us both this morning. Our energy perspective, it wouldn't be a perspective about the Queen's Speech and Energy Bill with, you know, some sort of royal punnage going on. So there we've got the jewel in the crown. What does the, uh, the Queen's Speech bring? We also had, because it came out very early yesterday morning, Ofgem's consultations about changes to the price cap. So we'll be going through those this morning as well. We also had a report that I really enjoyed from Renewable UK that was chatting and spoke about the highlights of the uh, and benefits of low carbon hydrogen. So we'll just run those through. And then the article that Alex very kindly put us together, which was looking at customers struggling with increasing energy bills. So Alex will be talking through that one. And just for looking ahead to next week, Energy Perspective will be by Dr. Craig Lowry, focusing, unsurprisingly, given the announcements yesterday on the default tariff cap and what that means. And our Nutwood we, um, will be some takeaways from a, a webinar about hydrogen that we did recently and kind of people's thoughts and feelings about what's going on there. So that is going to be our Nutwood the next week. Moving quickly on, I've just kind of pulled a couple of the points that were raised to do with the energy bill in the Queen's speech as kind of a backdrop because we didn't have um, really an image. We had a huge big table in our perspective last week. So, Robert, what did we learn from the Queen's speech? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Ronnie. We, we've learned that the government wants to follow through quickly on um, many of the commitments that it set out most recently in its energy security strategy. There's There's a lot of things that appeared in the strategy that now appear in the outline of what might be in the draft energy security bill. So there's things uh, to stimulate heat pumps, hydrogen, carbon capture usage and storage, competition in onshore networks, extending the default tariff cap. I venture to say that's probably the most important element in the bill for the government's point of view. And I know you're going to talk about the, the changes uh, proposed to the cap yesterday in a little bit. The role of Ofgem in heat net regulating heat networks, formalising the establishment of the uh, ESO outside uh, National Grid, so the, the future system operator or FSO. There, there's a lot there, but as with the energy security strategy, it's about as much as what isn't there as, as what is there. Um, the energy security strategy was quite quiet on energy efficiency, onshore wind, solar, direct relief on consumer bills. So it would have been extremely unusual for something like that to have come through in an, an energy security bill. So really a continuation of, of what we saw set out in the energy security strategy, which only came out on the 7th of April. Indeed, Robert, and it seemed quite a combination of the energy security strategy, which was kind of a bit of the net zero strategy and the 10 point plan and kind of all the other sort of announcements we'd sort of seen predating from sort of the last couple of years, haven't we? That's right. 
so what so you sort of touched there on sort of energy efficiency and could think was that what you felt was kind of missing from the bill or was it was it a surprise to you that it was missing again difficult to regulate for an energy efficiency program or initiatives that haven't been specced in in the strategy but also if you look at what is set out there's an awful lot of things to do that will require money Uh, and at some point we're going to have to set out how we're going to, for example, fund this novel market in in heat pumps, which we learned a little bit more of as well last week. Uh, We're going to have to set out how we're going to fund carbon capture usage and storage. And they were reading through some of the the, the background stuff. They they use phrases like state of the art, which, which seems a bit rum for something that hasn't come forward yet. But yeah, so there's lots of commitments to do things and, and not much on where the money's going to come from, uh, especially given where consumer prices are at the moment and could well go. I mean, the only thing on the consumer side really was the extension of the d- default tariff cap. What do you think is going to come next out of this then, Robert? Well, we we, see, we will see, uh, we should see a, a flurry of activity as these things uh, are taken forward and indeed we did see that last week, for example, with the Bayes consultation on the uh, market mechanism for, lo- for low carbon heat. We also saw the future nuclear enabling fund launched uh, and some interesting comments from the Secretary of State, uh, Kwasi Kwarteng, on uh, how new nuclear reactors will be funded through the bill, but the costs, I paraphrase and, and probably mangle the sentiment, won't be that much. So we would expect to see more of these you know, it's quite a, a busy program to, to set out if all of this is going to be legislated for. And clearly, we would expect to see a draft bill at some time with provisions for exactly how these things are going to be achieved. What wasn't in there, uh, and maybe it's a bit micro and a bit early, was some anything on the structure of the electricity market arrangements. I, I raise this just because when we changed the arrangements last time, we needed to legislate for a, a change to occur because there wasn't consensus within the industry at the time that change should occur. And and I suspect we will probably be in that situation again. Fabulous. Thank you, Robert. So looks like it a busy, a busy summer, I think, potentially for uh, for, for the a busy, a busy summer, autumn and winter, and not least with what you're going to talk about next. No, precisely. So, um, so thank you for, for answering those questions on the perspective, Robert.